welcome to Music in Mind Live. I'm Renee Fleming and I'm excited to welcome our guests today, two virtuosic percussionists and musical innovators who both personify the power of rhythm. Three-time Grammy winner, Mickey Hart, is best known for his many decades with the Grateful Dead, his desire to uncover the connection between life, rhythm, and the origins of existence has led him into a number of different arenas. He testified, along with Dr. Oliver Sachs, about rhythm and music therapy before the Senate Subcommittee on Aging. As a scholar, he has worked with the Smithsonian, the Library of Congress, NASA, and the Institute of Neurologic Function. While embracing traditional world music rhythms, Hart weaves sonifications of brain waves, nature, and the cosmos into his musical compositions. His work with neuroscientists Adam Ghazali and Nina Krauss seeks to identify rhythms that stimulate parts of the brain. In 1991, his album Planet Drum held the top spot on Billboard's world music chart for six months and was awarded the first Grammy ever in the world music category. Here are two clips of Mickey Hart playing with the Grateful Dead. I was falling, falling, falling. I turned around to see. Heard a voice calling. You were running back to me. So amazing. And our other guest today is the preeminent classical tabla virtuoso of our time, Zakir Hussain. He is one of the world's most esteemed and influential musicians, one whose mastery of his percussion instrument has taken it to a new level, transcending cultures and national borders. A child prodigy already touring internationally while still in his teens, Zakir has been at the helm of many genre-defying collaborations. As a composer, he has scored music for feature films and has composed three concertos, including the first ever for tabla and orchestra. He is the recipient of countless international awards, including two Grammys, repeatedly voted best percussionist by both the Downbeat Critics Poll and Modern Drummers Readers Poll. Zakir was honored with San Francisco Jazz's Lifetime Achievement Award for his unparalleled contribution to the world of music. Here is a clip of Zakir playing with Rakesh Chaurasia, followed by a clip of Mickey and Zakir performing together in the Global Drum Project. Amazing. Mickey and Zakir's careers are so extraordinary, we posted full-length biographies in the description for this episode. So before we begin, remember to submit questions in the comments section on Facebook. We're delighted to have had an audience watching from 54 different countries around the world. Thank you. I've also asked the audience to submit videos or photos highlighting a person or programming wor a program working at the intersection of arts and science. And we've been getting some great submissions and we'll share another one soon. Please keep them coming through the note on my Facebook page titled, We Want to Hear From You. So welcome, Mickey and Zakir. Th those videos just are amazing to me. Um, first of all, what 
do you think when you're playing? Because Zakir, the expression on your face, it looks to me like you are flying. Neither of you look at your instruments and you are in the zone, in some other world. Can you describe what goes on through your mind when you're performing? Uh, for me, uh, it's, it's, it's a landscape that I am travers traversing through. Uh, whether it's uh, going uphill, downhill, uh, uh, diving into a river, floating down somewhere, or just watching birds uh, fly over uh, uh, when I'm just playing a simple rhythm and I and I want to hit a little trill like dage dige dage dige it's like as if a flock of birds is going by so those kind of visuals are something that sit inside of me and so it's a, it's a, it's a, a very audio visual experience uh, uh, while performing and 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 tabla the instrument is sort of, uh, how should I call it? Uh, a set of headphones that sits inside of me and, 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 and I'm just going along with it. And, uh, I, and I know that it's there uh, and I don't have to uh, uh, tell it to follow me because I'm following it. That's interesting because I, I see a landscape when I sing. Uh, but for me, it is a it is a one line landscape because that's what the voice is—a single line instrument. And uh, I'm shaping constantly all of the phrases that I'm singing. But I'm I'm so fascinated to hear that you're creating the entire richness of the landscape. And what about you, Mickey? Because you're performing with other musicians, so I'm sure you're having to listen to them very closely. I do. Uh, I try to cut when I approach the stage. It's um, I try to be very calm. So uh, because music is very exciting. So I have to have a responsibility of keeping the meter and the rhythm. So <clears throat> that's very important. But I try to be in the now, like you say, in the zone. So I empty my mind of all things, and I'm there. And very much like Zakir, we know exactly where the drum is. Now, there are certain sweet spots on all of the drums. So when I really want to go someplace that takes like a, I will go there and I will look at it. But other than that, I don't have to use sight because it is part of me. I, it's like an extension of my, uh, of my body. And, uh, That's amazing. You both said that. That is fascinating. So when I think of a rock star and a tabla virtuoso, I wouldn't automatically put you together as collaborators. So tell us how you met, became friends, neighbors, and have ended up working together um, outside of the, the customary worlds that you work in. I actually love this story, so I want you to share it. Go ahead. The heart. Zakir's father, Alaraka, as you see there to the left, he was my teacher uh, right there. So uh, when I joined the Grateful Dead, I met Alaraka, and he changed everything. Once I realized that uh, you could fly this rhythm and do, do things that no one could ever even imagine doing. And then, but his instrument was very quiet. He couldn't play with me because it was a loud, very loud instrument, a drum set. But he said, my son, he could play with you. And one day Zakir showed up in 1970, knocked on the door, and he said, I am Zakir the same. My father sent me. And I go, whoa. And <laughs> go. And by the way, Zakir and I both won Grammys for Planet Drum and Global Drum together. So he was part of all of that. And uh, we became drum brothers. And we've traversed this time all, uh, as just the greatest of friends and a trailblazer. Uh, Zakir comes from a very strict uh, classical tradition and my tradition is the opposite. So I mean, I try to, you know, do this. <laughs> he doesn't do, he, he's totally there. Everything is perfect. He drives you crazy. So, <laughs> no, so but, it reminds me of, because of, I know that you have to memorize to so much work to really master the instrument in terms of learning the raga. Uh, and, and then going off from that, because you both improvise too. You're both very often improvising with your instruments. But I'll come back to that. So I had an amazing experience at Soldier's Field with you a couple years ago, Mickey, in which you, you invited me to join you on stage during a performance to see you play and have a look at the 50,000 people in the stadium. So I remember also visiting you at uh, the Ritz-Carlton Hotel and seeing not one, not two, but four generations of deadheads in the elevator, all wearing tie-dyed shirts, including the babies. So in the instrument you invited me to see on stage is the bean. 
tell us about the beam. Well, the beam is actually, a, it's called a monochord. It's what I'll be playing later in the program. And it was an invention of Pythagoras, a mathematician philosopher, 550 BC, a Greek, a, a Grecian fellow. And, uh, and he surmised that the revolutions of the planets and the stars and all of the heavenly glory here was a musical instrument. He called it the music of the spheres. So he gave mathematical equations to all of these revolving uh, objects and um, it, he, temperate scale, the octave, all of these things came out of Pythagoras's uh, uh, musical notation. So it, this is a modern version of Pythagoras's uh, marvelous monochord. Let, me, let us hear an, let us hear one, one uh, chord or one pitch, because uh, D is a very important pitch, isn't it? Yes, it is. It, it, I don't know if any of this is playing now or is this on, but you will hear it later. I don't think we have any uh, volume here. Oh, I hear it. It's beautiful. Yes. Oh. Uh, and your musical history, Zakir, encompasses an amazingly sophisticated tradition. Tell us about your training and the virtuosity, what, what your music also means culturally in India. Uh, because I, I know Mickey told me once that if I were to go to India, I should go with you because everywhere you go, you are the god, the rock star. Well, um, I think he's exaggerating a lot. Uh, uh, in India, most musicians, all musicians are considered to be uh, conduits to uh, spirits. Uh, uh, there are, music is a very uh, important part of our spiritual upbringing uh, it belongs to the temples it comes from the temples uh, and uh, many of the gods and goddesses who who people in india worship are shown with instruments like lord krishna is shown with the flute uh, ganesha the elephant god is shown with the drum uh, uh, lord shiva is shown with the damaru uh, saraswati the the goddess of knowledge and learning is shown with a veena a, a string instrument and so uh, this uh, is ingrained into people every young person must have a few lessons of 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 spiritual music that is sung in the temple or played in the temple so that's how we are brought up and so uh, musicians are considered to be very special in that way it's like almost a priest a priest of music connection of that sort so we are revered uh, and honored in that way and uh, 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 but having said that uh, the, our upbringing is is almost like in the temple or the church from a very childhood we are taken up into it when i was two days old for instance i was brought home from the hospital and and the tradition is that your father is supposed to whisper a prayer in your ear and when my father took me in his arms Instead of whispering a peer, uh, 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 actual prayer uh, from the shlokas or the Gitas or Ramayana, he sang rhythms. And, huh. and, my, and my mother asked him, why are you doing that? You're supposed to do that other thing. And he said, but this is a prayer that he's going to be praying through the rest of his life and, and leading the flock through. So, uh, uh, so I'm starting him right now. And from there on, that's what he did every day. He would hold me in his arms for an hour or two and sing rhythms in, in, my, in my ear. So I guess I was being prepared for what's to come later in my life. So that's our cultural upbringing. And, and we honor our elders in that manner, or we honor our gurus in that manner. If you notice, there's a garland on my father's portrait here because this full moon that just happened is the beginning of two weeks of, uh, of, of our, uh, our uh, journey to go and visit our gurus and offer our respects and gifts and thank them for the knowledge that they have transmitted to us. It's a very important holiday in India for all artists and everybody and, and, and it is followed diligently. Normally I would be in India today uh, doing this, but because of uh, Mr. 19, uh, uh, I am uh, sitting here with you, luckily, fortunately, with two legends, so I can bow down to you. I already sent uh, my message to Mr. Hart asking for his blessings uh, as one of my mentors, and I do the same with you, uh, and uh, because you represent the spirits, and, and that is what our upbringing is, and our music is all about. Thank you. Can you give me an example of how, when you say sing rhythms, to me that's a beautiful 
uh, combination of words because I never think of singing rhythms, I think of playing rhythms. Can you give me an example of what he might have sung to you? Well, it is because uh, when we are playing rhythms, we are actually, it's almost like reading a novel or looking at the charts and singing a song. And, and, and that language has to become like a sec second language. So just as I've learned the English and to express myself in English, I had to learn to express myself in the language of tabla. And, and you actually sang it. So what you, what you spoke, you played. So so there is a melodic element to it, an expressive element, almost like a question. So uh, these kind of uh, 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 little dynamics that you uh, express through your voice, you express through your instrument. And fortunately, the instrument has the ability to be able to show those dips and flows and 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 uh, so it's it's uh, that's what we first learn to do is learn to recite and sing the rhythms before we even get a chance to play our instrument. That's incredible, and also, I mean, I, I have to say, it is incredibly musical the way you just did that. It's extraordinary, and so you actually sang them and then played them. And I would say clearly, music was your first language. Rhythm was your first language. Exactly, because before I could learn to speak uh, anything, Hindi or. Uh, or whatever other language that we were speaking at home. I was speaking the rhythms first. That's, that's beautiful. Uh, so um, you're both interested in the healing tradition of, Trisha, tradition of music. I and mean, Mickey, tell us about drone and the power of rhythm and vibration. It's well, something I know you've shared with your audiences before uh, even the major concerts. Very true what Zakir just said, that music is a language and uh, but music is also a, an emotion. You can't see music, you can't feel it. You can, I mean, you can feel it, but you can't touch it. So when you play something something like a drone, an open drone like that, it affects your, uh, your brain waves uh, in certain ways. Different frequencies affect different brain waves. Uh, when you go really low, you'll go to you'll go to gamma, then a little bit lower, then to get then to beta. And, and so forth, alpha. So what you're really doing is you're moving brain waves while you're playing. That's really what we're doing. You know, we're, we're playing uh, to our brain waves. And, that, and you're playing to the master clock. This is the most incredible instrument on the planet. You know, your mind, your brain. Uh, so uh, that's, that's what you're really doing. And, and, and now we're conscious of it because we know that certain rhythms and certain uh, frequencies move people in certain ways, especially the people who are, are, are injured some way, like in, in dementias. We know that when we play certain rhythms, they start to come out of their, their, their zone and they start to sing and they start to maybe dance. They maybe even remember their first, uh, their, uh, first dance with their husband or something like that. So the memories come back. Uh, so that, that's what this is all about, cognition. That's what music really does. It, 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 it helps in cognition, it helps in, it actually, it, you know, Confucius was an interesting guy. See, Confucius, he said that he, he maintained a scale in, in the realm and he made sure that that scale was properly maintained. And he felt that there would be good feelings once the scale was maintained, whether it be the generals or the people to people. And so, Music it became very important in, in, in life. Uh, now science is taking over uh, uh, and really has supported on the anecdotal evidence that we have, especially like Adam Ghazali and Nina Krauss at Northwestern uh, and all these great uh, scientists are coming up with the, the formula, the code on what we know and love and have felt. I started when I was three just picking up a pair of drumsticks and just playing all over the house. It was not quite as uh, like Zakir's experience. Mine was uh, sort of ad hoc, you know, it, it went all over the place until I found my teacher. I found my teacher, just like Zakir uh, found his teacher and we've been playing our whole lives. It's a, it's a lifestyle to us. It's not, not just concertizing it. It well, I love that you said it's in you. Both of you said that. It's here. And you both pointed to your chest, which I, I find extraordinary. Zakir, you told me a really interesting story about musicians whose bodies have broken down 
you know, who are older or tired and what happens to them when they start playing? Well, this is, uh, this is a, uh, it. I mean, drone is a very important element, vibrations, frequencies, and, and so on. We in India take it as a natural everyday thing. It's not a scientifically uh, experienced uh, a phenomena. It's just a natural everyday uh, living experience. So that's a uh, part of our um, our music. I mean, if Earth, for instance, it revolves around that axis and it actually creates a tone. Uh, 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 Mr. Hart will uh, agree uh, and he will even tell you what note it is. Well, but we think it's 52 octaves below middle C, a B flat actually in our B flat exactly. So it's it's so there's a note and and it's already there. So uh, I, if for some reason the music in in our world has tied into it, and and one of our earlier drone instrument, which is the tanpura, was actually tuned to B flat. Ooh. Ah. Now, how did that happen? We have no idea, but it did happen. And, and, and uh, it's considered that our Earth is Mother Earth. The female energy of our life comes from there. It's a very strong energy. It is Shakti. And, and uh, all the ladies, when they sing in India, they sing in the key of B flat. <laughs> so it's, it's, it's interesting that it's connected. The standard tonic for for the female vocalist is B flat. So uh, I, this is ingrained and I've seen this happen. I've been tired and totally broken down after a 22 hour journey somewhere and I get on the stage, I start playing and, and just five, eight minutes into it, somehow it's like somebody gave me a reju rejuvenation injection or something and, and it's good. I've seen 90 year old tabla players, drummers uh, being helped onto the stage and they sit down with their hands shaking like this. And then they sit down to play and, and slowly the tipper tapper, pitter patter. And the next thing you know, the weight has appeared, the sound has blossomed, the punch has arrived and the hand is sturdy as a rock. And, and just mm -hmm. to watch that and, and to see that phenomena right in front of my own eyes. I mean, mm -hmm. this is real. It's not something that has uh, uh, has been imagined and 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 there are recordings of it there are videos of it so you can see that there is an energy inside of the music no matter where it comes from whether it's the Kyoto monks uh, uh, and the Tibetan uh, meditation bowl or their uh, throat singing or the thing singing from the Kundalini that arrives up and gives you those tonal frequencies that actually uh, uh, you know uh, just line up your chakras in a way where where they need to be and, and the ambience and everything that comes together this is all part of the music that keeps you healthy i mean joints at 70 start to eight but my father was playing at 80 and and there was never a complaint about oh my fingers are aching or my wrist is not working hmm. nothing like that ever happened uh, uh, ravi shankar played his concert when he was 89, 90 years old, pulling on the sitar strings, no issues, no pain, nothing. So this is all the power and energy of the vibration of the frequencies that emerge from the music instruments and emerge from inside of you yourself. Uh, and, and I do have to uh, say one other thing, uh, our energy together, Mr. Hart and myself, do you realize that this is our 50th year together? No, I, I haven't been counting. <laughs> but the, 1970s, when I knocked at your door, this is 2020. Wow. wow. That's, that's fabulous. Uh, wow. Many places together with the rhythm. The rhythm has taken us all around the world. We've learned rhythms from every part of the uh, planet. There is no country, there is no culture that does not have a music. The whole planet, it's, music is not a luxury, it's a necessity. Uh, uh, because music has made us human. Uh, it, well, and the two of you are, it's kept you young, obviously, because you're both the most vital people one would ever want to meet. Uh, and you got to meet somebody that I so wish I had met, Mickey. Um, you worked with Oliver Sacks. Uh, and you also introduced me to Connie Tamino, and who will be on a, a later episode. So how did you come to be involved with them? You know, this, this, you've been so ahead of your time. The speech that you gave 30 years ago was amazing. And we're, we've actually put a link 
to your entire speech, which was about music therapy, and it was for uh, the Senate Special Committee on Aging, um, and way ahead of your time. Now, this is becoming very popular. This must be a, so gratifying to you. But tell us the story of how you met and started working with Oliver Sacks. Well, I was uh, asked to be on the board of the Institute of Neurologic Function, where Oliver was, and Connie Tomeno. And so I got to know Oliver. Uh, and then I asked Oliver to come to a Grateful Dead concert. And he brought one of his uh, patients. And this patient, his clock stopped in 1968 or something. I mean, he didn't remember anything before 19. That was it. And uh, so he brought him onto the stage. And, and he hadn't spoken or anything. And then all of a sudden, he started chattering. And he says, that's the Grateful Dead. That's the Grateful Dead. Uh, but he, he said, but he said we played a new song. He didn't recognize it. And then he also said, where's Pigpen? Pigpen was one of our lead singers. It was a nickname. And so he was able to recognize Pigpen was back in the 1968, but in 1980, whatever, he was not there. So he recognized that. And then they made a movie out of it. The music never stopped. So then Oliver and I went to the Senate and we just told them that music is a necessity. For, for civilization and for and, and it's a, and it's a medicine uh, it's a tonic and so uh, Harry Reese uh, he gave us a million dollars to start this uh, rhythm therapy here in the West thank you Harry uh, and because uh, no one else would even think of it so um, that's that's how I got involved with Oliver he's a was a swell guy you know just a brilliant person he was full of life he was full of you know, I I just, I think it's so extraordinary. The, you, you introduced me to a lot of aspects of this, actually, and, and, and really got me interested in it. And Connie is still doing great, great things. Um, so another, another concept that we talked about is entrainment. Uh, and so that was something I'd never really thought about, wasn't very familiar with. Can you tell us what entrainment is and how music is related to entrainment? Christian Huggins, back in, I think, the 1600s, came up with this, uh, this thought that any two objects that were similar eventually will be together. He put two grandfather clocks on the wall and eventually they were in time. So any two organisms that have anything to do with each other eventually will be in time because nature is most efficient and, and music is as well. So that's really the law of entrainment. Now, it doesn't always, it's not always musically. Uh, it could be in life. Love is a, is a form of entrainment. Uh, yeah, I think the book that you shared with me was about ants. Oh, that's right up there with that. <laughs> well, the brain, uh, e thank you to E.O. Wilson. Uh, this is a superorganism uh, right up there with the, with the ants because the ants are really the, the superior uh, uh, complex organism on the planet. So. Uh, yeah, so that's where the ants came in. But, uh, <laughs> but it's rhythm. It is definitely related to rhythm, and it's a form of rhythm. The yeah. fact that when we're walking together, we tend to be start walking in the same tempo, and yeah. people in general do that. Um, it's, it really is amazing. Amazing. So I, you sent me a quote recently. I have one more question for you both no. from Moliere, uh, Mickey. Uh, All the wars which we see in the world only occur because of the neglect to learn music. Were all men to learn music, would not this be the means of agreeing together and of seeing universal peace reign throughout the world? So what are your thoughts on the seeming chaos we're experiencing now with the pandemic, political division, the struggle for racial justice? Um, you both traveled the world extensively, and what is your hope for the future? Well, music's primary focus is to bring, uh, to involve people in life, and so take it from there. You know, a, a better a better person would be uh, someone who loves music and and appreciates all the the beauty of music and all of the power that is contained in it. So that's the story of entrainment, really, and and the power of music. You they say the power of music is really deep. You know, and only musician would know it. When you get on a stage, you're playing with uh, your band. What I do is I try to help everybody out. I, might, I want to make everybody look good, sound good, and I want myself to be part of that organism that beats together and pulses and throbs. And that's our spiritual dimension. So the Grateful Dead was a jam band where it made up things. It was improvisational in nature. 
we couldn't really remember what we did the day before. So we figured, well, why, why remember everything when you can just improvise? We, we got kind of good at that. Right. Uh, and yeah. <laughs> no question. Zakir, do you have any thoughts on that? Well, uh, we are not any different. Doesn't matter where we are. We all think the same thing. We all know that love is an important element in our lives. Uh, nobody has said anything different, whether you take all the way up when the Bible was first written, or even before that, Abraham and Moses and Zoroaster and Muhammad or anybody who comes out, they all have said the same thing, love thy neighbor, uh, 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 be at peace with each another, do good, uh, be happy, <laughs> be pleasant, you know, and, uh, and, and one of the elements of the music uh, is that it, 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 uh, it injects some kind of a happy thought inside of you. It does that. Even when you listen to a sad song uh, and there might be tears in your eyes, you smile and appreciate how beautifully that emotion was, was conjured. Yes. And, and so there is a certain amount of happiness inside of you when you do that. So this is uh, the kind of thought process that has existed from time immemorial. Uh, from time to time, we as human beings stray and we forget that. And, and maybe this is the time when that's happening, that we are sort of led astray, we are on a different track, but somewhere along the line, somebody's gonna pull that little hammer down and we'll come back and, and, and line up. And, and uh, uh, hopefully uh, uh, the understanding of uh, Amin, Amen and Shanti, I mean, uh, in the Bible, they say Amen. In Quran, they say Amin. Uh, in 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 the Gita or Ramayana, they say Shanti. It all means the same thing, and 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 Shalom. It all means the same thing. And so, I hope that we will again remember that that's what it does, and, mm. and go back to as it was before, all one plate with all the smorgasbord, and we just tried to take it all away in different directions. Let's put it all back in the same plate. Beautifully said, uh, both of you. Um, we, we have a few questions now, and you know the inside name for the collaboration uh, that we've we've actually been working on, and and your collaboration is the Sonic Tonic Club, which I love. It's an illustrious club, uh, and we've put together a recording performed three thousand miles apart in three separate locations. Uh, you don't live far apart, but you are still, and you're collaborating, but from home. So we're going to play. But first, we have a couple of questions from our viewers. So David asks. Mickey and Zakir, love you both. So influential in my life. Uh, Jembe, builder and player. Will there ever be live Planet Drum concerts, the original lineup, available? Well, probably not the original because not everybody is still here on this plane. But Zakir and I work every day remotely pretty much on the next Planet Drum album uh, uh, or work uh, remotely. So. But uh, two, two other alum, alumni are still with us, Giovanni and Sikiru Adepojo. That's right. Some of us are here. Uh, and uh, yes, there will be. Thank you great. for asking. Thank you. That's great. So Margaret asks, I'm curious to hear from Zakir Hussein, how and where rhythm interplays with healing in India? Uh, rhythm. Uh, you touched on that a little bit uh, with music, I, but... Uh, it's it's the vibration. It's it's uh, it's 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 the frequency. It's you see we go through. It's a very interesting thing. We we call it chilla. I have told Mickey about it, and it's in the book uh, Drumming at the Edge of Magic. Uh, we are at a certain point uh, asked to go and live alone in a retreat by ourselves, and it's very biblical. It's forty days, all by yourself away in, in the place where your ancestors have gone to a retreat. It's called Chilla. And you are alone with your music. Somebody brings food and leaves it outside the door for you, out of, uh, of the hut, and you eat when you want. But for 15, 16, 17 hours, you do nothing but you play music. Huh. And in that rhythmic uh, development, the first time I did it, I was 16 years old. And, uh, and I started playing music and, and what's interesting is whatever experience you've had in your life, uh, it will manifest itself in some sort of visual 
uh, uh, encounter in that because once the rhythm is playing all this time, all these hours and the vibrations, it gets hypnotic and you get caught into this dream world and then things start to appear. For me, negative did not exist because I was still very young. Everything was very positive. So the energy was good. And I do remember that I encountered this dervish like human being and uh, he came and he taught me a few rhythms and I learned in my mind maybe it already existed from all the things that went into my ear from my father before I don't know but it came back and I learned it I came back home and my father says what happened and I said well I learned this composition and and he said where did you learn this he was shocked I said, well, there was this visit from this dervish and he taught it to me. And, 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 and then he went away and he started pacing up and down. Uh, he was like really, very really serious. And after a little while, he came up to me and he gave me a hug. And he said, you know, this composition, I've never taught it to you and you don't know this. And, and I'm so blessed that I got to see this moment because that was my great grand guru that came to you and taught you this composition. And so okay. it came to me in that manner. It's the rhythm that brought me, brought me at that plane, at that ethereal plane where I, where I transcended into a world where I met beings right. of incredible light and energy and knowledge. And, and, and this is what the rhythm is all about. And it does that to you. And it, in, then in, in doing so, it also, uh, uh, reinforces you to be able oh, to face the world and be able to defy age if possible. Oh, beautiful. I, somebody asked me actually a much more uh, nuts and bolts question. Chris from Chico, question for Renee, how does your approach to the rhythmic part of music change depending on which style or genre you're singing in? Uh, it changes dramatically for me because uh, it's, we call it style we refer to it as style. So whether it's if I'm singing in something that's Baroque or classical, then we want to be much more in tempo and much more on the beat uh, in terms of, of style. I remember um, a Sir, Sir Georg Schulte constantly hitting me on the shoulder, just in push, pushing forward that rhythmic impulse. And I had teachers, mostly conductors, who that was what, what I learned from them because um, in other styles of music and later styles of music, then I have a tendency to be much freer and, and bend the rhythm to my own desires. It's, it's one of the ways in which I can interpret and be uh, more creative. So, so, and now for our collaboration, it's not the first one. In 2018, we performed at the Kennedy Center in Voices of the Rain Forest for a music and the mind convening, and then a presentation at the Hayden Planetarium in New York. Mickey's sonification of the universe from the first rhythm of the Big Bang to the neural vibrations of the human brain. And today we've got something new, and it's called Open Eyes. Here it is.
Thank you. Thank you for the collaboration. Thank you for having me. We call it. those uh, gam the alpha waves, I think, right? So yeah, we restful. Did. We did. Oh, well, I want to thank my extraordinary guests, Mickey Hart and Zakir Hussein. Um, please join us again next Tuesday at 5 p.m. via my Facebook page, Renee Fleming Music, or the Kennedy Center YouTube channel. Episodes will be available to view later, though, if you missed this live webinar. To stay in the loop, sign up for the newsletter at my Facebook page or my website, ReneeFleming.com. Next week, we're going to investigate the fascinating genesis of the power of music, human evolution, and how our brains and bodies were hardwired to respond so strongly to music. Joining me will be Dr. Ani Patel, professor of psychology at Tufts University, where he studies the cognitive, neural, and evolutionary foundations of music. He has been examining how humans and even other species process rhythm and melody. He's currently writing a book on evolution, music, and the brain, supported by the Guggenheim Foundation and the Radcliffe Institute for Advanced Study at Harvard. This is a favorite subject of mine, and it follows fantastically after our talk today with Zakir and Mickey. So I hope to see you next week. Thank you. Thank you.